Welcome back to another TS Terra Plays Terra video. Alright, so the Terra Console 106.01 update is finally out and released. So let's start off with taking a look at our vanguards. At the very top, you'll see RK9 normal mode is giving 7,000 gold away. Now, this dungeon should be matchmaking only. Um, we'll test that in a little bit to see if we can just walk into it. But if we can, I expect it to hopefully be fixed before this video is released. Within that, we also have Red Refuge, and these dungeons are also accordingly giving the proper amount of the Vanguard tokens. Ravenous Gorge is still in the game at 5,000 and matchmaking only. We have Lilith's Keep added. Bahar. Now let's go into Bahar and see the changes. That being that Bahar is now giving what's called the Bahar's Fury Mask, which this is the new update. A little later today or at some point, I will record getting some of these masks and we'll look at what they offer. We also have all the Kaya stuff just like before. And then at the very bottom, you can see yes there is a weapon etching energetic five now i'll have to dive in like i said i'll try to run as much bahar as i can and if i can get one of these i will screenshot it to see is this a pure energetic five or is this something that can crit into a t6 a lot of us are really wondering if it's just a flat five or if they've actually given us that much that much power so within that, we also have Velik Sanctuary Hard Mode. Velik Sanctuary Hard has not been changed. They haven't added anything. Um, again, as soon as I run the dungeon, I'll be able to give a better idea on whether um, the HP, how bad it is, how different it is, and so on and so forth. AHM, the teleport is back in the game. They've also made it a 460. As you can see, it has everything that a 460 should. It also gives four tokens, just like Grotto gave. So as you can see, we do have RK9 Candle Heart. It is listed at a 460, and it gives everything a 460 does, but it does say it gives the jewelry etchings. I don't know if this is just a visual glitch. When we run it, we'll find out. Dreadspire is still in the game, they've added Rev Refuge Hard Mode, and Lilith's Keep Hard Mode, and these should be reorganized as 455s in the game, and yeah, all the rewards is the same. So, within that, that is the dungeon changes we have. The next thing on the list to go over that I want to show off is the High Watch Specialty Store. A lot of people have been wondering well the random four etching boxes you can buy 50 of them they cost 321,000 gold i'm gonna be honest i'm not gonna be buying these anytime soon stat change superiors are 53,000 gold now if you're in a real hurt and you got a lot of leftover gold might be kind of worth might not players make your choice are you a console gamer? Do you just love your controller that you just so much can't live without your joysticks or maybe the buttons or just the way it feels in your hand? I know I am. I know for a solid few months, I was trying to get used to a good old uh, keyboard and mouse and I just couldn't do it. I was trying to play games like Terra, Final Fantasy 14, and it just wasn't doing it for me. But let me tell you, you can get a program called REWASD right now that gives you full keyboard and mouse support while using your controller. Yes, this program allows you to map everything on your controller to your keyboard and mouse. So games like Dota or other games similar that have a somewhat controller support, even Terra PC has some support, but it's not very good. You'll get full support with the use of this program that you can just map it to everything and that gives you full support. Or maybe you want to play a game like Valorant. Maybe you just love shooting games, but 
your inner console kid just can't get used to keyboard and mouse? Well, let me tell you, Valorant, from what I know, has no controller support yet. Within this program, you'll get 100% support because it just acts as you're using a keyboard, but your controller's telling your keyboard what to do. So look into getting REWASD. If you want, in the description of this video, I have a basic package, or maybe you're someone who wants the full package, where you can get extra configurations, you can get full controller advanced mapping support, or you can even get things like aim assist to help you shoot. Within that, thank you REWASD for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to it. The next thing is they have added an additional NPC that I'm sure a lot of us are curious about. Now, if you go to High Watch and you know where the crafting stations are, you could come over to the etching, go in, go all the way to the designs, and we can buy ourselves a design etching Oreo wings box. Now, I'm going to buy that now. I haven't bought this yet. Equipped it. Anyone can do this. Any one of your characters is good. I checked this before doing it. Yes, you can make the etching for Aura Wing Boxes. We'll get into this a little bit later on actually trying to craft them, as I'll need to go collect some of these from IOD BAMs. But it costs no skill needed to make these etching boxes. So, other than that, that's how you get those. And this NPC is meant to be in all the big areas. So, within that, that is the two stores taken care of. Let's take a look at quite a few of the other stuff. Um, the first thing is, you could see already, the incomplete etching scrolls. Now, I only dismantled one of my etchings. You dismantle them just like you would dismantle anything. You go over to the, you know, category where your etchings, press the dismantle button, and then find the etching, hover over it. I don't think I should have to go too much more into detail. It's just like dismantling materials. When you click it, you do get one of these scrolls per whatever etching you dismantle. From what I noticed, I picked up you know, I didn't do an energetic or anything crazy, but I did do a weapon of some sort. And it seems like you only get one. If you guys dismantle something else, correct me if I'm wrong. But from what I'm thinking, it's every 10 etchings you dismantle, you could buy whatever T4 etching you want. So if you have 100 etchings, you can buy 10. So, pretty decent conversion rate. Uh, it's a bit higher than I think what most people thought, but honestly, I think it is a fair rate that, you know, you can have a Swift Jewelry etching, dismantle it, and, you know, you, you could dismantle your jewelry etchings to directly get a weapon etching. So, I think this is a pretty fair system. Uh, the next thing... The next thing is the Dawnstorm tokens. Basically, they did rework the shop. You can now officially get enchanted fashion item boxes. It is 125 of the Dawnstorm. You can also get Guardian, Guardian Legion jewel boxes if you need. And they did lower the price of the plunder glyphs significantly. Along with the other glyphs, they've lowered their price significantly. Um, within that, we also have the Dawnfall tokens. You will need to get 500 of these to get a Enchanted Fashion Item Box common. So, there is still a point that you might want to just trade your Dawnfalls into Dawnstorms. Um, you guys could do the math on what's better. The Legendary tokens, they've adjusted some prices in here. As well as they did add the Marks of Fate. It is 5 Legendary Tokens for 1. And if you have 25 Legendary Tokens, you can get some Stigma Chest. They've also updated the Bounty Hunter Shop. As I believe... 
you can also get stigma chest from here now and it seems like they didn't change ah they changed the gem cost okay so you only need two emeralds and one diamond now wow very generous um then again we'll dive into some other stuff to see how useful is it still to get the shadow hunter brooch within that that is i believe all of the shop changes yes that is all the shop changes the last thing to go over before we get into killing some iod bams is the guardian superior reward box this is a brand new box that was just added and to get this box you need to do your guardian legion mission to get enough credits to go buy the box now we're gonna go over and go show where this is bought for anyone who hasn't done your guardian legions and maybe you don't or you just don't remember um basically i believe it's mia or maya is the vendor and honestly this is the vendor i used to buy my glyphs from believe it or not back in the day of leveling you come over to mia master supplies all the glyphs but here's this box 800 tokens 800 vanguard standing is all you need and you could buy so let's buy some let's take a look at what this brand new box has now the dev notes say they should have gems stigma shards and the vanguard or the federation tokens so i got two rubies federation coin okay you know it's not a ridiculous amount but it's all pretty useful materials that it doesn't make me regret wanting to do my guardian legions especially with the fact of those also were updated now i'm not gonna go crazy and do a bunch of guardian legions um maybe we'll do one and wait and then, or I'll do one, you know, we'll do a cut screen. I'll do one, we'll go into it, and then I'll show the reward. And then you guys can kind of see, like, maybe it's worth now. Like, they said they up the legendary tokens, they've up all that stuff. The Federation coins is pretty a nice bonus. So, within that, though, do know that I believe those boxes were bankable you can bank them so you can get federation or you can get your guardian legion missions done on all of your characters bank all these and open them on the character that you want those federation coins that's a very good thing to know now at this point in the video i'm gonna go over to iod and show a montage of killing a bunch of different bams on island of dawn and the reason I do this is because the brand new materials to craft your Aurora's wing etchings allowing you to etch your face mask is done through killing these bams and getting these materials. So anyone who's wondering where you get the feathers and the crystal and the essence and stuff, well that's from doing the IOD bams. Now I really enjoy that the game has added this solo content and added you know material that is kind of important if you want these etchings you have to do this and it's something you can do while you're waiting for a group to fill for a dungeon so within that if you're wondering exactly how to get these items well the feathers drop from the high tier bams the crystals drop from the mid tier and the essence drop from the low tier there we go and that's how you get these materials now at this point too i want to mention earlier in the video i said that i was going to show off a guardian legion mission and the rewards 
and I decided to cut that portion out as I do want to keep the video under 20 minutes and I don't want it to be crazy long. So within that, I do want to share, I did run a Guardian Legion mission, I did run bounties, and they did increase it. I believe the Guardian Legion's normal missions, you get about 10 Avenging Talon tokens, and if you do the Super Guardian Legion, you can get up to 15. Um, this is a very nice addition, as well as the Bounty Hunter tokens, I believe for the baby ones, you get 10 I didn't run a elite bounty or a high tier bounty, so I don't know how much that gives. But overall, I think it's a really good quality of life change, and I'm happy to see that all of that stuff's getting reworked. Especially for Guardian Legion missions, if you do your dailies, every time you collect a box, you also get 15 Stigma Shards. So, do 15 times 40, and you can get a bunch of Sigma Shards this way as well as turning in your tokens for stigma chest. I think this is an amazing change they made to the game. I'm super happy to see all of this change. And with that, we come to the end of the montage. All right, so now after that, long longish not too bad grind of killing multiple bams we ended up getting one like enough to build one of these or craft one of these etching for oreo wing boxes so within that we're going to craft it and there we go now if you crit you get four crafting it just gives you one or you get three and yeah, no and then for the inventory just to show off during that time we did actually get it looks like three of each of these not too too bad let's take a look of what happens when we open so from here i kind of want to talk about these etchings since the recording of the video i have talked to a quite a few of other players that have opened up boxes as well as myself I sat down and grinded out to open up 60 and basically I want to explain the difference and how they work. They are etchings that go on your face mask not your actual like Bahar's mask no no your costume face mask and you will have to take that off and etch it like a piece of jewelry. Also, there are two types. You have a green and a blue. The green ones will only last for seven days, while the blue etchings are permanent. Now, the only last thing is, I thought these would only go up to T5s. It actually turned out after opening up 60 boxes, I got two T6s. So within that, they might go higher, I don't know. If anyone's got a higher one, please let me know in the comment section. That would be amazing. If not, I'm going to assume the highest as of right now might be T6. At this point also, the last thing I want to mention about these etchings is that they give not one, but three stats in one. What I mean is that when you read these etchings, you actually see that you do get power, you get endurance, and then it also goes with, you know, the flight gauge duration. So that's kind of cool that they've added an etching that's not just, you know, your standard six power, X amount of crit, X amount of endurance, having three different stats. So I kind of hope this is something maybe we see more. The last thing about this topic is soon here in the video and maybe you have tested it yourself if you go onto your other costumes or your cosmetics like let's say your halos or your headpieces or you go onto your back items if you actually unequip them and press y you'll see there's an option to etch them now i'm not gonna say 100 percent certain that we're getting etchings for these from what I understand, PC did get back etchings, and maybe they got some others that we didn't have yet. Maybe this is something that's coming to the future. I would actually hope that it is. 
but I kind of will be curious to see what other stats we can get. Within that, my final notes for this patch and update is that I really enjoy the solo content that's been added and I think a blue hole is going in a somewhat correct step. Now there are some bugs with this patch, I have messaged the devs about it, um, hopefully they'll get back to me and I'll have an answer for y'all soon. But the biggest thing is RK Extreme not dropping loot. Within that, I hope you liked the video, if you do, go ahead and hit that like button. If you got questions, feel free to ask, and as always, if you're not subscribed, please do so. Hope to see you in Aboria Gamers!